Acute non-compressive nucleus pulposus extrusions, or an ANNPE, is a neurologic emergency that is characterized by a sudden extrusion of hydrated, non-degenerated disc material that suddenly affects the spinal cord and can affect your pet's ability to walk. The spinal cord is a long band of nerve tissue that carries messages back and forth between the brain and the body. This serves as a highway that is protected by the vertebral column. The vertebral column is made up of small bones called vertebrae, which are connected by fibrocartilage known as intervertebral discs. Intervertebral discs work as shock absorbers and allow the spinal cord to bend. They are made up of an outer fibrous ring called the annulus fibrosus and an inner gel-like filling known as the nucleus pulposus. Years ago, IVDD was classified into different types, both resulting from disc degeneration and compressing the spinal cord. There was acute, or Hansen type 1 intervertebral disc extrusion, or IVDE, and there was chronic, or Hansen type 2 intervertebral disc protrusion, or IVDP. However, in more recent years, mostly due to advances in diagnostic techniques such as MRI, other forms of intervertebral disc disease have been recognized, such as an acute non-compressive nucleus pulposus extrusion, or an ANNPE. ANNPEs occur when some of the nucleus pulposus ruptures out of an intervertebral disc. The difference between an ANNPE and disc extrusions or protrusions is that it is only a small amount of healthy, hydrated disc material, so it does not compress the spinal cord. Instead, it shoots out at a high speed, causing injury to the spinal cord, such as bruising, swelling, or bleeding. ANNPE is also not the result of degeneration, but rather excessive force placed on a normal, healthy disc. High impact exercise, a fall, or other trauma can tear annulus fibrosis, which will cause a small amount of nucleus pulposus to shoot out and strike the spinal cord. Symptoms of an acute non-compressive nucleus pulposus extrusion include acute pain during activity that can make your dog cry out, acute lameness after activity, often only affecting one side of the body, pain that improves after a few minutes or hours, symptoms that do not progress. These are really common in young, active, medium to large dogs. Definitive diagnosis of all forms of intervertebral disc disease is based on imaging. MRI is considered the gold standard as it can distinguish between compression, obstruction, contusion, and a tumor. MRI can also help predict prognosis based on the size of the affected area and the severity of damage. MRI criteria of an acute, non-compressive nucleus pulposus extrusion include a hyperintense lesion above the disc, reduced volume of a disc's nucleus pulposus or gel-like filling, small volume extradural material above the intervertebral disc that is not causing compression, and narrowing of the disc space. ANNPE is typically treated conservatively with K-Drest, nursing care, and physical rehabilitation. Restricting physical activity may be necessary for several weeks to allow the tear in the annulus fibrosis to heal. Surgery is not helpful since there is no compression to relieve and no medications have been shown to speed up recovery. Over time, bruising will subside and most dogs will show improvement within a few days and completely recover within a few weeks. Nursing care consists of providing a clean and soft padded bedding, helping change your pet's position to avoid the formation of pressure sores, and providing easy access to food and water. Light physical therapy is also of benefit to avoid joint stiffness, muscle weakness, or atrophy. Prognosis is excellent for the vast majority of patients with an ANNPE. Although all forms of intervertebral disc disease have similarities, they have contrasting treatment protocols and prognoses. For example, an acute, non-compressive nucleus pulposus extrusion has a good prognosis without surgery, whereas a traditional intervertebral disc extrusion may have a poor prognosis without immediate surgery. It is critical to achieve an accurate diagnosis in order to put your dog on the correct path to recovery. So if your dog suddenly becomes unable to walk, please contact a veterinary neurologist right away. Thank you.